Hello, my name is Andrew Gary, and welcome to Seismic Sound Off, in-depth conversations in applied geophysics. Seismic Sound Off wants to hear from you. Please email us at podcast at seg.org or call us at country code 1-918-497-4627 with your comments and ideas for future shows. The SEG Distinguished Instructor Short Course, DISC, is an eight-hour, one-day course on a topic of current and widespread interest presented at locations throughout the world, with an emphasis on the unique aspects of vector wave fields, anisotropy, and the important relationships that unify S waves and P waves. Jim Geyser, the 2016 DISC lecturer, presents an overview of 3C seismic theory and practical application. From fundamentals of PS waves and vertical seismic profiles, through to acquisition and processing, including interpretation techniques. In addition to being the 2016 DISC instructor, Jim is also the principal research advisor for Geyser Geophysical Consulting. Jim has worked in this technology for decades, with companies including Arco Oil & Gas, Western Geophysical, and Schlumberger. If you will be attending the annual meeting in Dallas, you will have an opportunity to attend Jim's discourse, as well as an opportunity to meet him and other SEG authors. Visit seg.org slash am or follow SEG on Twitter at seg underscore org for the latest information. Jim, thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for this opportunity to talk about the course and a podcast. Uh, this is a subject I've been interested in my entire career, and I'm very excited to share it with everyone. I was struck by the quote you chose to open your book, a Latin phrase that translates everything that comes in threes is perfect. What is the significance of this quote? Ah, a very good question. It's to emphasize the 3C aspect of seismic exploration. In physics, there seems to be the number three arising very often. Uh, For elastic waves, it is more than just the three components of particle motion. For example, the vertical components and the two horizontal components. In general, there are three elastic wave fields. Of course, our familiar P waves, but also two shear waves, a fast and slow traveling mode. As a result, there are three wave field velocities. There are three important geophone coordinate systems to process and interpret these wave fields. There is an acquisition orientation, as mentioned above, the vertical and horizontal. And there's a wave field orientation, which is related to the wave fields. And a natural Earth coordinate system related to the stresses and faulting within the Earth. However, it's important to distinguish these coordinates from the ones that define the location of sources and receivers. Basically, our industry is embrace the importance of anisotropy, how it is related to the seismic wave field and the various Earth models. There are three types of velocity that define wave field properties. The slowness, which is one over velocity, phase velocity, and group velocity, which tells us the direction of the seismic energy. I discuss the important properties of these velocities throughout the course. There are three types of anisotropy, most important for our exploration place. There's the vertical transverse isotropy or vertical polar anisotropy that's related to layering. There's the horizontal transverse isotropy or horizontal polar anisotropy related to stress and faulting. And then uh, orthorhombic anisotropy, which is related to layered and fractured medium, a combination of the two. There are many other triads, but uh, this gives you an idea of what I'm getting at with the, uh, the quote. Bob Hartage, in his review of your book for The Leading Edge, marvels at how you take two separate topics, 3C reflection seismology and vertical seismic profiles, and create a common set of technical principles to state in Hartage's word, a seminal publication. What inspired you to join these two geophysical topics into one course? Well, when I began my research in VSP at ARCO, Atlantic Ridgefield Company, we always considered these two topics linked because of the shear wave aspect of both. They are both 3C technologies to detect the full elastic wave field. Uh, 3C seismic is associated with the wave fields recorded on the surface of the Earth. And the VSP is associated with wave fields recorded in the Earth. That's the main difference. Uh, My view is that 
they are intimately related because VSDs have been acquired with 3C technology from its earliest beginnings. One chapter of your book explores the history and development of S-Wave and VSP technology in the 20th century. What was one thing that surprised you as you looked into the development of these technologies? Uh, This is a very interesting question. Actually, I lived through the development of this technology in my career. So what surprised me most during that period was with respect to uh, shear wave sources. Ironically, after ARCO developed their vector wave field impact sources, they would have had to pay Amico royalties to use them for all projects to handle shear wave splitting. This was something that surprised all of us and demonstrated the risks of source development. Also, horizontal shear wave sources in general have not led to a large shear wave exploration industry. On the contrary, conventional P wave sources did by utilizing converted P to S wave technology. In the preface, you write that when you started this book, the financial state of the industry was strong and unconventional resource plays were growing. Though even in this current climate of low oil prices, you say there is still an urgency to adopt new strategies for the next generation of seismic exploration. Can you share how the topics in your course will help companies and geoscientists address challenges of today and the future? Yes, I'm glad you brought up this subject because it is very important. One way that this technology can help companies is to use the full vector wave field for better reservoir management to improve the petrophysical description of the reservoir, as well as the geomechanics of the overbird. This accomplished through joint inversion of compressional and shear waves together. Specifically, there's a challenge with unconventional reservoirs. As we have seen, the practice of drilling and fracking everywhere is unsustainable in these times of low oil prices. And just doing less of the same is not the answer. When 20% of the wells and fracks provide the majority of production, we need to do better at predicting the sweet spots with the full vector wave field. This can be done with higher certainties when we use shear waves and P waves and the anisotropy. Another specific challenge is reservoir monitoring of production and the fluid flow. Imaging the reservoir with 3D VSPs using fiber optic instrumented welds may provide a tremendous opportunity, but we need the three components of the DAS, that distributed acoustic sensing fiber optic systems, not just a single component, to optimally image P waves in non-vertical wells. And this will also enable imaging with PS waves. One of your goals with this course is to provide a better understanding of the principles of 3C seismic and the unique characteristics of PS wave and VSP imaging. One way you do this is through the use of case studies. Could you provide an overview of one of the case studies you present? Yes, and in my opinion, the best example for converted wave imaging is the Colleen case study. It's a high temperature, high pressure gas condensate column of sandstones in the North Sea. The reservoirs are at about 15,000 feet, or 4,600 meters, very deep. They occur in a complex geological setting uh, in a rotated fault block that is unconformable below uh, high-velocity chalk layers. And it is bound on the southern edge by uh, a huge... Uh, salt diaper, the Merganser salt dome. Based on similar fields in the area, these type of reservoirs can result in overburden, compaction, and deformation of well bores, a very expensive problem. So the objective of the 3C project at Culleen was to determine the feasibility of using converted waves, shear waves, to obtain geomechanical properties in the overburden and from the top chalk to the top reservoir. The the case study highlights the reconnaissance processing of the overburden. So it's a preliminary study. A sure way splitting analysis and correction for strong birefringence and geomechanical properties. Also, the challenges of full 
azimuth pre-stack migration in this complex geological setting were also highlighted. Despite these challenges, though, the imaging study demonstrates with high confidence that quantitative deeper layer stripping, VPVS registration analyses, and joint inversion should provide uh, quantitative shear wave information for geomechanical properties down to the top chalk. As for VST imaging, I include several case studies showing the tremendous advancements for P waves using mirror migration. I also emphasize important opportunities for PS wave mirror migration. What do you hope the professionals in your course and the readers of your book take away from your work? Well, for those who are unfamiliar with this subject, I hope this book serves as a thorough introduction to the basics of 3C seismic exploration and VSP. For those who are already familiar With the technology, I hope it will increase their knowledge and understanding, in particular with an emphasis on anisotropy. So the ultimate goal of the course is to demonstrate the benefits for industry-wide use. And I hope that professionals see how shear waves can help P-waves applications. We know they do from amplitude variation with offsets and angle analyses, but when we record the full wave field, I want readers to understand the basics of how shear waves can be used to image and interpret our geological models. Up until now, they haven't been used that much. Uh, But after this course, I hope that they will learn enough to realize the potential and consider using 3C, seismic, and VSP in the future. So far, you have traveled in the UK, Austria, the United States, Argentina, And in August, you will be teaching throughout Australia with many cities to go. What are you most looking forward to as you globetrot, bringing your course throughout the world? What is the greatest challenge ahead of you? Well, this is a tremendous honor to represent the SDG and give the course around the world. And I'm looking forward to visiting all the cities that that we have uh, scheduled so far. For myself, I'm also looking forward to learn more about new applications of the technology that have not been published yet. And for others who are taking the course, it is to see eager geoscientists embrace the technology who are interested in advancing it to the next level. Actually, the greatest challenge during this downturn is that most companies have reduced training budgets. We're encouraging companies to look to the future and to not sell themselves short. As an industry, we need to think about the science in these difficult financial times and look for ways to improve the business. Jim, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to join me and talk about your work, and we hope many people catch you out on your tour. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure talking with you. At seg.org slash podcast, you will find Jim's full schedule on how to register for his course. If you cannot attend the course, you can purchase the book at seg.org slash bookmark. Subscribe to Seismic Sound Off on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you enjoy the show, show your support and please review the podcast on iTunes. It makes a big difference. Season one of Seismic Sound Off is sponsored by the SEG Wiki, home to hundreds of biographies of key geoscientists, geophysical tutorials, and core content from the science of applied geophysics. Visit wiki.seg.org to learn how you can grow the world's first online geophysics encyclopedia. Thank you to Jim Geyser for taking time out of his busy schedule to speak with me. This episode was produced by Isaac Farley, Susan Stamm, and me, Andrew Gary. Original music by Zach Bridges. Email us at podcast at seg.org or call us at country code 1-918-497-4627 with your comments and ideas for future shows. Thank you for listening. This is Seismic Sound Off, signaling off. Hi, my name is Susan Stamm, Books Manager. 
The Society of Exploration Geophysicists, founded in 1930, is a not-for-profit organization committed to providing high-quality educational, networking, and professional development resources to 24,000 members in 126 countries. SEG publications are an essential resource for students, researchers, and practitioners working in applied geophysics. Be sure to visit seg.org slash new books to read descriptions of our latest publications. Thanks for listening to Seismic Sound Off.